Hi, I'm Kirsten Chick, author of Nutrition Brought to Life, and this podcast is a companion to the book. You can listen as you read Nutrition Brought to Life, or before as a kind of preview, or after you finish the book as a refresher. Either way, I hope this helps you make some small changes that make a big difference in your life. Hello and welcome back, or welcome if you've just joined us. This episode relates to Chapter 8 of my book, Nutrition Brought to Life. I've already introduced you to my three mindful mouthfuls practice. If you missed that, it's in Chapter 6. And I've mentioned mindfulness a few times in previous chapters. Chapter eight is called Mindful Eating and Your Health. So we're sticking with the theme for a while. I start chapter eight with a quote from Rick Hansen's book, Buddha's Brain. Suffering is not abstract or conceptual. It's embodied. You feel it in your body and it proceeds through bodily mechanisms. Buddha's Brain is a fantastic book about the neuroscience of mindfulness. In fact, its subtitle is The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love and Wisdom. It's a great one for the geeks out there. The point of this quote is that suffering, i.e. stress and trauma, has a very direct impact on how your body behaves, the state of its various tissues and all the biochemistry that happens there and therefore your health. We've already seen how stress diverts energy and activity away from parts of the brain, the digestive system, and the reproductive system, and how it can tense and contract your body in ways that stem the daily flow of liquids, nutrients, hormones, and waste to wherever they need to go to keep you healthy. So the day-to-day stresses that we encounter, as well as the big life traumas, have the potential to impact all of that. In fact, it's worth noting here that these processes can also be triggered by your own thoughts. So by dwelling on something that's happened or worrying about something that might never happen, your body can experience the same outcome as if that thing were actually happening right now. It sends the same signals by your nervous system, and via the stress hormones released by your adrenal glands. That doesn't mean you should suppress your responses or bury your head in the sand. That's just another form of stress simmering away below the surface. What it means is that you need a whole system of stress management that, number one, calms down your nervous system and adrenal hormone response. Number two, allows normal bodily functions to continue. Number three, replenishes the nutrients and energy depleted by being on red alert, sometimes for many years. And four, enables the repair of any damage done to the body in the process. We can't avoid stress and trauma in our lives, but we can make sure we have as robust a system as possible for dealing with it. And we can do all of this with nutrition, what we eat, as well as how we eat. The next couple of chapters will look at the gut, brain, adrenal triangle and nutritional support for these. But remember, it starts with how we eat. And for most of us, that means mindfully, calmly, perhaps even joyfully. Mindfulness meditation has been well researched. Mindfulness has been shown to settle the stress-related sympathetic nervous system and activate the more placid parasympathetic nervous system instead, which basically means the nerves in your brain and around your body are sending calming messages rather than alerts to fight, fly or freeze. It also calms down your adrenal activity where your stress hormones are released and strengthens your immune system. Mindfulness isn't about escaping to a cloud. It's about being more present in the here and now. It's about feeling what's going on, how the breath feels entering your lungs, or how the food feels as you chew it, 
or how the soles of your feet feel as you walk. Thoughts can and will distract you from this, but that doesn't mean you failed or can't do it. The act of acknowledging that my mind has been somewhere else for the past five minutes and then bringing it back to how my body feels right now is part of that practice. I've mentioned before that for some people with PTSD, mindfulness can actually be re-traumatizing. But for most of us, it's just difficult, but ultimately rewarding and arguably life-saving. Meditation has been, sh- has been shown to help many medical conditions, including cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, asthma, chronic pain, PMS, insomnia, anxiety, phobias, and eating disorders. Mindful eating has specifically been associated with less emotional eating, less binge eating, as well as reduced anxiety and depression. And it's a strategy I often recommend. It can be difficult for a number of reasons though. We're not good at settling into our bodies and sensing how they feel. It can be an uncomfortable process. We might feel those aches and pains we're trying to ignore or that bloating we can't get rid of. Or it might be difficult to feel a body that we have trouble accepting. Maybe we feel too fat, too thin, too wonky, too stiff, too weak, too clumsy. It's those kinds of judgments that can be the most distracting. Whatever's going on, actually sitting with ourselves, simply feeling without judgment is often the clearest path back to acceptance. Acceptance of ourselves, warts and pains and niggles and all. And perhaps even then to joy and gratitude for ourselves and this crazy, wonderful existence. I'm now going to quote directly from page 92 of the book. My book, this is. Um, nutrition brought to life. And what is the point of anything without joy? We talk about enjoying good health for a reason. True joy is an intrinsic measure of how healthy and nourished we are. Healthy living shouldn't be full of, I mustn't have this and I can't do that, or having to be serious and dull all of the time. Instead, let's opt for Wow, life's amazing and fun and breathtakingly beautiful. I can do so much and the choices I'm making are bringing me so much joy. Of course, we're not going to be joyful all of the time and we're not going to be 100% healthy all of the time either. But a miserable diet isn't going to get us to either of those places. Anyway, I digress. Let's bring it back to mindfulness. You may already have a regular mindfulness practice, or this might serve as a gentle shove towards looking up that class or that app you've been meaning to try. But also weave moments of mindfulness through your day, such as feeling the temperature of the air on your skin, the way your toes feel as you wriggle them, or practicing three mindful mouthfuls every time you eat. Thanks for listening to the Nutrition Brought to Life podcast. There's also a Facebook group you can join called Nutrition Brought to Life podcast community, where you can share useful insights and recipes, ask questions and get more support on your nutrition journey. If you haven't read it yet, there's so much more in the book, Nutrition Brought to Life, as well as all the scientific references and some glorious pictures. And you can find out more about me at kirstenchick.com.